Hi, and welcome back to week five of Bulldog Weekly. I'm your host, Michaela Angshad, and for this week, we've got some exciting segments, starting off with another RBTV Cribs. Girl, what are we gonna do for RBTV Cribs? We've showed the studio, we've showed the catacombs, and everyone knows like what the school looks like. Yeah. So, what now? Why don't you guys go to the zoo? That's genius! Let's go! Hello and welcome back to another episode of RBTV Cribs. We're here at the Brookfield Zoo to show you around some of the exhibits and features. I'm Jenny Thomas. And I'm Michaela Angshad. Let's go. <laughs> it's definitely a giant gorilla. I feel like it could be bigger, honestly. We're here at the giraffe exhibit where you can actually feed the giraffe. This is one of the really cool features where you're able to get up close and personal with the giraffes and feed them, which is pretty cool. <laughs> you can see right there, there's a new born giraffe that's only about a month old. Yeah, her name's Kinda, which means beautiful in Swahili. So, so cute. There's a section over there by where the waterfall is where there's actually a viewing glass where we can actually go into. Yeah, if we want to do Where that. if the polar bear was swimming, you'd have this really nice view of the polar bear swimming. Coming up is one of my favorite exhibits when I was a kid. Um, we used to jump from iceberg to iceberg, so. We survived, we did it. Unfortunately, due to global warming, there probably wouldn't be this many icebergs to step on. Depending on the animal, um, there's usually a gift shop kind of related around the type of animal. So or the animals living within the ecosystem. right now and we get to pet these beautiful little babies. Remy's, oh my gosh, hi Remy. Remy's leaving. My new uh, co-host, sorry Jenny. This is my new co-host. And here you can actually, you can put a quarter in and get a handful of pellets okay. and you can actually feed the goats. It's a little bit loud in here, but there's a bunch of parakeets. And a cool thing that you can do here, you're able to purchase a popsicle stick with seeds on it, hold it out, and the parakeets will land onto your stick and eat the seeds. Thank you so much for watching another episode of RBT Crib. And a special thanks to the Brookfield Zoo for letting us come and film here. It was super awesome. We'll catch you next time. I'm Michaela Angstead. I'm Jenny Thomas. Bye. <laughs> Jenny and I really want to thank the Brookfield Zoo for that amazing opportunity. It was so much fun. Up next is a segment featuring Rock Band and their live Friday. My name is Mr. Baum. I am the number one roadie of rock bands, or the teacher. Um, 
Generally, I'm the roadie though. I'm just setting up equipment and getting the space ready for kids to learn uh, how to play rock music. My favorite part about Rock Band is that we get to be creative. Um, and we have a lot of like independence, kind of like free reign. Uh, the purpose of the class is to have students learn music uh, together in rock bands. Um, so they're learning guitar, bass, drums, keyboard, and learning how to sing rock music. I really like the um, collaboration by rock bands. It feels real uh, special to have, to be working on a song for about like weeks or so, depending on how hard it is, and just having that end product performing is real nice. My favorite part about rock band is probably like the groups and being able to like have like, I don't know, being able to talk to people. Um, I like that there's, like you get to make your groups and you get to work with different people that you probably wouldn't work with in the first place and just make fun music. Jam Lab is the uh, end of the semester showcase of rock music that we do at the Jam Lab in Brookfield. Um, each band gets to play three songs or so and uh, it's just a great evening of rock music. I can't wait. For, I'm excited for the, um, the Jam Labs. Yeah, I, I like Jam Labs too. Oh yeah, totally join the class. You don't have to play at all. Um, that's one of the great things about the class is we have true beginners, like never even picked up the instrument. The school owns the instruments and uh, kids can learn. Uh, but it's also great for kids like uh, on the other end of the spectrum who've been playing for a decade and uh, really love rock. And there's players that will be, they'll be in community with as well. I must say, for that being Rock Band's first live Friday of the semester, that was pretty impressive. Now let's take a look at the marching band. As you probably know, our field show is The Magic of Chuck Mangione, so a lot of our images are themed off of his music. We went with Chuck Mangione because he does this Latin inspired music, which is still fun to listen to. It might not be as recognizable, but it is still fun to listen to because it grooves really hard. Uh, during band camp, we usually set uh, one day for each drill. And then we spend a lot of time after school and during classes really refining movements and playing. From drill writing to everyone knows what they're doing, it's hours of work. Like right now, I think we're up to uh, 30 hours or so of practice. Uh, so we practice during the during the day in the marching band classes, but then also we have a weekly practice. On top of that, the guard is working on the side, doing their choreography. There's just, there's tons of hours of work. We use a software called UDB Pro that allows us to see exactly where we'll be on the field. So um, the uh, school has a computer on it that has this program called 3D Java. Um, and basically, I just program in every player. This G here is a guard. E are euphoniums. All of the P are different pieces of percussion. So yeah, each instrument is uh, labeled up there. Coming up next is a segment including Dr. Skinkis, where he interviews Arby's two new AD interns. Kevin Skink is superintendent of Riverside Brookfield High School. And with me today are our two assistant principal of athletics who are serving in an interim role for the 23-24 school year as we transition in our search for a new assistant principal of athletics. So to my left is Dan Jones, retired athletic director from Hinsdale Central. And to my right is Tom Doman, retired athletic director and uh, physical education teacher from Willowbrook. So uh, Dan, why don't you go first and introduce yourself to the community. Hi, I'm Dan Jones. Um, I, as Kevin mentioned, I am uh, retired from Hinsdale Central just recently. Uh, I have been an athletic administrator for 18 years, uh, 11 of them in Hinsdale Central, and before that, uh, I was in DeKalb High School. Uh, while at DeKalb High School, I was there for 22 years as AD. I also coached three sports and uh, was a social studies, social studies teacher. 
Um, I am a member of the Illinois Athletic Directors Association and a past president. Um, and I am really, really looking forward to uh, helping out the staff and the uh, athletes here at Riverside Brookfield High School. Thanks, Dan. Tom, this is your second go as an interim uh, athletic director for us. You helped us out back about four years ago. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your past. Okay. Hi, I'm Tom Doman, uh, interim athletic director for this year. I also had the privilege of doing this back for three years uh, with John Triber uh, when in 2015 we had a similar situation. So familiar with the building. I had uh, 35 years at Willowbrook High School. Another suburban uh, community high school similar to this school. So a lot of similarities. Uh, again, uh, trying to maintain what was developed here. It's a great school. Trying to maintain the, the programs and keep everybody uh, moving down the line. Uh, everything here right now, like you said, is um, a well-established uh, building for facilities. And we're just gonna make sure that kids have the opportunities uh, to get out and have activity and have different experiences. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Dan, what do, what do you think your focus will be this year? I know it's uh, an interim role, um, but is there something specific you're looking to help the administration with this year? Yeah, I definitely want to make sure that the uh, staff and our athletes um, are able to compete um, and that they're ready for play and then whatever I could do to assist that. And then uh, in a uh, long-term role, I'd like to help out the administration and the staff and, and uh, school, the community move forward, uh, finding a new athletic director and then uh, hopefully helping that athletic director transition to uh, RB uh, next summer. Great. Tom, what would be your focus this year? I know, like you said, this is last year you helped us with the interim dean role, uh, yeah, covering we, our maternity leave. Is there something specific you want to focus on this year? Well, we think we're um, in transition here. Obviously, the conference uh, we're moving into for next year, 24-25, will be the Upstate 8, and there'll be 14 schools there and a lot of planning and uh, scheduling and divisions and things will be developed in the next coming months. So that'll be something that we'll have to keep uh, abreast on. And then our other conferences that we're currently in, we're obviously gonna be departing, but we're still participating in those events and making sure kids have their conference championship tournaments and their scheduling and things like that. So that's gonna be a lot of changes coming forward, but a good change for the school to have a consistent, stable conference of 14 schools to schedule with. A lot of exciting stuff. I mean, Dan helping with the search, Tom with the uh, transition to the new conference. Um, for the community, we'll probably begin our search process somewhere around posting the position in November, uh, with interviews being probably in December or January, but we'd like to get that candidate approved early second semester uh, so that there's time to transition with uh, Dan and Tom. I want to thank both of you for uh, stepping up this year and helping us out, but also uh, coming in this morning uh, to meet the community and. Uh, Thank you so much for doing this, and I'm looking forward to continuing to work with you this year. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching episode five of Bulldog Weekly. I'm your host, Michaela Angshed, and we'll catch you next week. That's the bell. See ya.